So I'm here at the East Coast Rep Rap Festival. You can see everybody's down there checking out all the fun stuff to do. But I'm up here in the, the great upper levels. The upper levels are the best because you have stuff like this and some other things that I'm going to show you today. So stay tuned everyone, we're going to see what's good at East Coast Rep Rap Festival. I'm sorry, it's 3D Printopia now, please forgive me. Okay, first up I want to show you my booth. So this is the uh, Quadrupolar Express, I've made a couple videos about this, but basically I'm able to print giant stuff like this in extremely high speeds. This is an 8 kilogram print that took about 8 hours, and uh, I didn't bring a long enough USB cord, so I have to go up here in order to operate the terminal for this printer. But don't worry, today's sponsor FlexiSpot provided a very strong desk that can support this immensely heavy printer and my immensely heavy self. FlexiSpot also provided this power strip and they even have some integrated cable management in the bottom of the desk. This is one of the special desks that has four actuators so it's able to lift and lower extremely large weights and uh, we got a nice high quality top here. It's a very sturdy table for a printer that weighs around 300 pounds. It's doing a great job. And as you saw, I was hopping up on there, so uh, can handle quite the load. Now, don't judge FlexiSpot for the cable management down here. They provide all the hardware to be able to tuck this away and have it look really nice. But as you can tell, clean cable management is not my specialty. So, uh, yeah. All right, all right, I'm getting a little scared of heights, so uh, that's enough, that's enough. Let's, uh, <laughs> okay. So uh, thanks again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this episode. Now we're gonna go check out some of the other printers that are up here on the second floor of 3D Printopia. Okay, so first up, it looks like we have someone that stole my idea. Four print heads on a single printer. That was totally my idea. And this person stole it from me. So I'm very upset about that, but it's still pretty cool. You can see it's a Core XY motion system with a four print head gantry. And I'm just kidding. I actually saw Rick's printer two years ago at East Coast Rep Rap Festival. So uh, maybe I stole his idea. We're not, we're not gonna be pointing fingers today though. His print quality is much better than mine though. You can see it's uh, producing some really nice parts. It's just cranking out parts with this one printer. It was mostly made out of low cost ANET parts. There's a lot of cool features on here like a wobble reduction system. It's got a little ball bearing on a magnet. And overall, it's just a really nice build very well executed and it's actually making useful parts. This is the Rook. What I like about Rolahan's designs, especially the Rook series, is that they look really simple and easy to build and print out. Capable of high speeds and affordable to build and really easy to put together. So I definitely think they're one of the more underrated designs. So maybe check out the Rook. It might be a cool project for you. Also, we have an uh, enraged rabbit carrot feeder here. This is a multi-material unit. It's only 50 bucks. This guy's selling it. All right, so this is the M45 printer. It's um, someone brought to show it off. It's a custom design that'll be open source soon. So this is a uh, drive shaft with a couple universal joints, and it's powered by a remote uh, stepper motor. And that's a square shaft. We've got a scale model here. 400% scale model, so this is like a big version of what's going on. All the little bearings in there. And there's even more bearings in here, so there's a lot going on with this design. It's really cool though. If you want to learn more, check out the M45. And uh, I guess that will be on... Oh, Dahlia's printing, no way, I know you. Okay, yeah, yeah. Do you want to be on camera? All right, nice to meet you, Dahlia's. Why is the, uh, why is the bed moving instead of... Uh, it's a bed slinger in all three directions. Okay, so it's a two-dimensional bed slinger. Very cool. Yeah, moving X, Y, and Z, stationary tool head. What's this uh, project called? Um, so we call it the coaster slinger because oh, the, the beds are just these tiny little like drink coasters that you pack walking around. But... All right, so this is the coaster slinger with the Revo nozzle. It's a very premium tiny bed slinger. Also, we've got the Micro Swiss booth here. I got one of these Flowtech designed nozzles but now it looks like they've implemented it onto the Soval SV08. So I guess some people are having issues with the extrusion system on this printer, but this is a pretty bulletproof solution. You can just get one of these, slap it in there. It's got the same plugs, so overall the installation should be really quick. You're gonna get higher flow rates using a CHT style nozzle and just better melting altogether. So 
it's a little weird that they're using their own proprietary nozzle system, but it seems like a good ecosystem. Also, they're working on some Bamboo Lab stuff. Now, I don't like Bamboo Lab, but a lot of you do, so you might be into this. They're working on this, it'll be coming soon. All right, let's move on. It seems like every event I go to, there's more and more positrons. Now we've got a bunch in different colors. There's at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. Here's Zombie, we're at his booth. I'm gonna take a look at some of his wares. This is a screw holder device slash sorting solution. So it's got a bunch of different little drawers here. I think this is a Positron, and this is one of Zombie Hedgehog's coolest printers. Each colored tool head has the correct colored filament in it, so it's kind of cool. You can see the green tool head is active, and then you'll know your green filament is printing. That's six tool heads all together, so very cool little uh, printer there. All right, let's move on to the next one after stealing a bunch of these. This is Electroplated Prints by Hendrik. He's been coming to a couple of these shows, and uh, he's got a YouTube channel so you can see this whole process in action. But we're just taking a look at some of these prints here. Uh, metal plated prints. My personal favorite is this one. It's very blingy. Some bling for your 3D printer. And this is like a movie prop quality electroplated print here. Just excellent work. Another movie prop quality print. These are just very well done. Excellent attention to detail. And I'm sorry for getting my fingerprints on these. I'm sure they'll have to be clean. Okay, we've got some Hedamami headphones. I've never tried 3D printed headphones on before. We're now listening to music that you can't enjoy because it's copyrighted. So I will tell you if it's any good. What's, what are these? These are open backs. Oh, uh, okay. These ones sound a little bit better in my opinion. But I, I listened to Sennheiser open back headphones oh, uh, sure. as my default. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pretty cool stuff. I think the coolest part about this is that you can customize it. Yeah. This is a popular children's toy from I guess the 90s. I don't know. I never played this game. But you got to put all the things in here before it pops open. It's kind of like operation. But I think we're cheating a little bit. Uh, Mitch, Mitch is offering a little bit too much assistance here. The game is rigged. The game is rigged. Oh. Micro Center is here with some filament demonstration walls. This is really cool. It reminds me of those uh, poster catalogs you could page through at the grocery store when you're looking for wall posters or something. This is the same thing, but for filament. So you can see the color, you can see the, uh, the model number, you can see how it prints. And these things are pretty tough too. So yeah, and this and the machine goes to the filament. The machine goes to the filament? What does yeah, this so mean? The, the whole machines. We have two of them in the company right now. One's in Charlotte and one's in Miami. They are a 40 foot tall, roughly 20 foot long machine that holds 3,000 rolls of filament. You scan one of these guys here, it'll go, J -j 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 go right here, roll, give you a little lab where it's supposed to be. You go in, grab it, that's your roll. Okay, so it's basically a vending machine for filament? Kind of, yeah. I'll have to check that out. So, what, are, what locations is that? Uh, Charlotte and Miami. Okay. Yep. All right, so we're here at the Hue Forge booth. This is the most extensive collection of Hue Forge prints that I've ever seen. I like the texture and the colors you get with this stuff. Another squish for the camera. Squeeze, okay. And then it looks like this printer was made for Hue Forge. This is a Prusa XL. And uh, yeah, since it can load up five different colors, that'll give you five options for your Hue Forge prints. Also, it's got a large print bed, so you can make some decently sized pictures here. Lots of cool stuff here at the Hue Forge booth. I like this Jurassic Park one. That's great. I mean, this looks like the type of like reference squares you would see on commercial screen printed packaging or something. Yep. So we've got a little filament color tester here. So yep. I can just insert my filament. It reads the transmission value, which tells you how much light passes through it. And then it gives you a hex code that gets loaded onto the computer over the USB port. So now we have that orange color from the filament we just tested, loaded up. And now it's over here, so we can actually bring it down in and predict with it in Hue Forge. Nice. All right, also we've got Peel Poly here. Uh, we're just checking out the actuator they have set up as a demo. Can I overpower here. it? Uh, it's set up to resist motion, and it's very, uh, it's pretty strong. Like I'm not able to, to just push it around like I would on a normal belt-fed, belt-style printer. 
So you're saying this is set up to produce about, how much? About 64 Newton currently. Okay. But it does have a current limiter on it for safety, which is currently set to about 20%. Oh, so kids don't get like their fingers caught in there or something. Yeah, currently at full speed, because at, at full speed these systems will do, like in, in here, this printer, which this is one of the axes in there, uh, it has been tested to about 30,000... I mean, I'm not into specs quite so Fast. much. <laughs> I'm going to test it. Uh. So it's now just pop, yeah. and it's turned itself off. So then we just do a reset, take a couple seconds, one reset, turn itself back on, and we can just run it again. So it's got that safety feature in it. It's using just a uh, step or break out. Yeah, that makes sense. And you're selling these individually now, right? Yep. So the Magneto X is still on sale. That's fifteen hundred. But if you just want to buy one of these linear motors, you can get it for two ninety nine. Um, I understand that's about as much as some three D printers. But if you have some specialty application where you want something like this, this would be a cool like uh, kinematic thing to play with. So here's the Magneto. It seems like they've ironed out a lot of the bugs and now we're printing pretty fast with this uh, whole linear motor system. Theo Poly and Soraya Tech are also coming out with their own co-extruded uh, carbon fiber filament. In my previous videos I showed how these can shed some fibers sometimes, but you've actually got an outer jacket of regular filament on this carbon fiber reinforced filament. So we'll take a closer look at this under the microscope in a future episode. Alright, so now we're checking out some stuff at the A3DP booth. Now A3DP is the company that hooked me up with those awesome step servo motors that I was showcasing in one of my videos. We've got the full stack of step servos. So this is a NEMA. This is the extruder motor. Oh, uh, okay. It's a 1.5 amp. Oh, uh, okay, okay. This isn't a step servo. So this is a 1.5 amp motor, despite being really small. Stock motors on most extruders are usually like one amp or less, so it's got a hardened steel gear. You could upgrade to this if you needed a little more power. I think it's designed as a drop-in for the LGX motor and the FXD. So this is an in-house designed A3DP extruder. But also we've got those step servos. So I checked out the NEMA 23 version in one video, and uh, they've also got a NEMA 17 version. This one's a little bit cheaper, but I imagine it'd be a little less powerful since it's smaller. But you know, a chunky little servo like this is gonna be able to put out a lot more power than an equivalently sized stepper motor. And then we've got a nice little demo here where you can see the, uh, the return to zero functions of this step servo. So a normal stepper, you just skip steps when you do this. But with this one, it's able to spring back to the desired position. All right, and then uh, they also sell their own printers. So this is like a larger format ABS printer with insulated panels, and it's got those step servos in the back. Should be pretty fast and quiet. It looks like these are, I believe these are drop-in replacements for the Voron design, so if you wanted to have a CNC machined version of the little gantry components or the X or Y stepper motor mounts or the, the belt tensioner, these are all super minimally uh, designed, they use a tiny amount of material, so they're really light. And you can see this thing is able to accelerate back and forth quite fast. Maybe I'll have to upgrade my Voron Trident that I'm working at with some of this stuff, because I think it would make it quite a bit faster and nicer. All right, we're just about to pack up and uh, disaster has struck. Um, oh, that this one ran out of filament. All right, so that's about all for today's 3D Printopia coverage. It was a good show, met a lot of people, a lot of awesome fans and projects going on. Now the print didn't go off perfectly. We had a couple issues, but you know, we're just packing this up and getting it set up and it's not ideal circumstances. It's not like in my lab where I'm paying attention and making sure everything's set up properly. A lot of things came loose in shipping and you know, that's just the, uh, the struggles of joining an event like this. But what did work flawlessly was the FlexiSpot desk. That worked well. The, the printer on top maybe didn't work perfectly, but it demonstrated, you know, my process and my printer to a lot of people that were interested in seeing it. And uh, yeah, that's what it's all about. Check out FlexiSpot desks if you want one of those. I'll leave a link in the description below. I actually think this would make a really awesome 3D printer. You could do like a four foot by two or three foot print area, just, uh, you know, moving that up and down. Or you can build a gantry over the top and have the bed drop down while it prints. I mean, uh, you know, that might be a crazy idea. Let me know if you want to see a FlexiSpot sponsored large form factor 3D printer build. I'm getting heckled for my broken print over here. 
Anyways, uh, yeah, I slammed this on the ground and was able to break it too. So despite being really strong, PTG has some issues with impact strength. So when it's loaded really rapidly, like when you slam it on the ground, it can break and it breaks like glass. So that's just your little material science lesson of the day. PTG, very brittle material when you load it very rapidly, like when you throw it at something. If I made this at a TPU or something, it'd probably still be in one piece. With all that out of the way, I think it's time to sign off. I'm gonna have to load this thing up and uh, get it back to my office before I do some more experiments with it. It's only about uh, 300 pounds on the table, so. There you go, it, it handles it no problem. It just works. Yes, it's quite impressive. It's a flexi spot desk. Flexi spot, oh my god. I could wow. build one of these up. You could, you could. You could build one it yourself. Pick me up. It probably could. I, it picked me up on top of this with that. So that it's is actually uh, very impressive. All right, so that wraps up this year's uh, East Coast Rep Rap Festival, 3D Printopia. is a great time. Now, in case you were wondering, this is the best way to transport a large 3D printer. You just use your FlexiSpot desk as a bed protector. It works great. Anyways, uh, I think it's time to hit the road before it gets too rainy. All right, later, everyone. You've been touching a horn, and you have not washed your hands after that. Wait, well, what? I don't want you to infect the other printers with your horonity. Oh no, he's gonna die first. Oh uh, shit, it's back up right now. This is what actually looks like, bro. Is that my helmet? Yeah, it's called print shift. Wow. That's cool. There's some other stuff too. Is that a mod? So also, what we have over here is uh, a little display of different linear actuators. So you can kind of get a feel for what these linear actuators are like. You got different brands, more expensive ones, cheaper ones. So you can kind of see what the difference is. We've got some uh, ball screws. And I assume this was just experiments that were done to see which ones are best for a certain application or just trying to make use of spare parts. But you can see how they work and the relative levels of slop. So this is the type of stuff that you can't really learn online. Just being able to touch these parts and feel them and get a sense for what you need on a 3D printer you design, that's what it's there for. So uh, just really cool display, cool printer. So thanks Rick for showing us your stuff. Also right here we have some different axles out of a BMG clone. These are from cheap clones out of China and uh, these are like your AliExpress special that you get for four or five dollars. It's a lot cheaper, but part of that is because there's not as much quality control in these wore through pretty, pretty awfully there. So, uh, all the more reason to buy high quality parts when you're doing something important, or if you don't mind changing parts out and having stuff break, then just get the cheap stuff. Semi trucks, remote direct drive, and it's only about like between 35 and 40 grams down on the extruder here that's on the tool head. 